Well, good day, everyone. It's Graham from Great Off-Road Adventures, and welcome back to another video. Now, in this one here, we're going to talk about our Nitto Ridge Grappler tyres. We've been fortunate enough to run them for the last 12 months. It's time for us to give you a nice, unbiased review, let you know what we think. So, let's get stuck straight into it. From the tough tracks to the remote tracks, from our campsites to the workshops. Come along and check out Great Off-Road Adventures. Your next episode is just seconds away. Nice. Alright, so let's talk about a bit of background, how I ended up with the Ridge Grapper tyres before we get into the nitty gritty of the tyre review. So, when we left for our six week trip at the start of last year, uh, we actually started out the trip on our, our previous set of tires, which were the Toyo RTs. We suffered a puncture three and a half hours into the trip and we had to replace the, the RTs. The, the best fit uh, in terms of size and quality and all of that was the Ridge Grapplers. And I had actually wanted to run the Ridge Grapplers and test them out. So it was a good opportunity. Um, so I'd like to thank the guys at Tire Power Bayswater. Um, a, they opened the shop early in the morning to fit us in, uh, and B, they gave us a little discount on the tires. So recommended retail on these tires at the time was $450 a tire, and we managed to get them for $420 a tire. So not massive, but $30 over six tires does start to add up. I'm not affiliated with Nitto at all. This will be a completely unbiased review. My only affiliation is with the crew from Tide Power Bayswater, and I know those guys both through variety, but also now uh, more personally through um, my great off-road adventures. So I have a really good relationship with the guys there. And it is fortunate that they are the biggest Nitto reseller in Western Australia. So if you're looking to get Nittos, um, they'd be my first port of call. So yeah. That's how we ended up uh, getting the Ridge Grapplers. Uh, it was by bad luck, but also good luck at the same time. So now having given you the bit of background, let's have a look at what we've put these tires through over the last 12 months. Uh, and it's fair to say, they certainly have uh, done their fair share of work. The other important consideration to let you know is where we've taken this car, what conditions we've put it through, how many kilometres we've done in the last 12 months with the Nitto Ridge Grapplers. So it's certainly no um, highway princess. Those of you that have watched my channel for a while will certainly know that. So like I said, we got these tyres on the very first day of our six week trip up north. The, literally, we got them in the morning and that afternoon we were camped up at Billion Pool, which is about 100 kilometres north of Mekathara, uh, pretty much racing, making our way up to the Kimberley uh, as quickly as we could. So we put these tyres through hell in the Pilbara and in the Kimberley. That very first trip, that six week trip that I'm talking about, uh, that trip alone was close to 15,000 kilometres uh, of, of travel uh, in, the very, in the first six weeks of these tyres. Now, I'll touch on it later, but I did suffer two punctures from that trip, um, and I don't, I don't blame the Ridge Grapplers, but I'm gonna talk about that uh, when we get into the nitty gritty. This is my daily driver, so this car also takes me to work and back uh, each day. So that alone for me as well is 30 kilometers uh, one way, so each day I do 60 kilometers uh, on the highway. So I can speak quite highly as to how they perform on the highway, but also off-road. We then end up in the Pilbara again, this, uh, this time with the Variety Bash, and uh, again, tortured the tires on that trip. Uh, we came back from there, had a bit of time at home, did a few local trips uh, around this area, around Perth, hour or two away. Uh, went down to Esperance, collected our camper trailer, did a trip through the wheat belt on our way back um, with my parents. And then we went down to Esperance again over Christmas. Uh, obviously with the good weather and the nice, uh, nice weather over the summer months, we ended up in the Southwest on uh, some of the more challenging beaches in Western Australia. Obviously running the tyres at a nice low pressure, but also seeing how well they performed in the sand. 
And then of course, uh, we've come uh, back into winter again. Um, and the last trip we've just come back from recently, uh, all up around Kalbarri. Again, we did some coastal stuff on that trip, but we also ended up um, in the clay and in the mud and in the rain. So I can speak really, really highly as to how these tires perform in all those conditions. Um, any of my international viewers, uh, if you want to know how they perform in ice or snow, uh, I'm really sorry, I can't speak to how they perform in those conditions. We just don't get that uh, over here in Western Australia. Let's get into the nitty gritty and actually chat to you and let you know um, how they do go. So let's talk about how they perform on uh, wet and dry bitumen because like I said that's generally where most of our kilometres uh, are done um, and being in Western Australia we've got to travel long distances just to get to anywhere and that's predominantly all done on bitumen. Now I'm really really uh, impressed with how well the ridge grapplers perform on uh, wet and dry bitumen. So dry bitumen, they have all the grip in the world. Uh, they don't give me any understeer. Um, they hold on really well when I'm cornering more aggressively than I should. Um, and they don't give me any issues uh, taking off uh, from the traffic lights or from the line or anything like that. Now, we can obviously have the camper trailer on the back and put quite a lot of load on the car and they grip up and perform really well. Now on wet bitumen, performance is equally as good. I feel a very sure footed driving the car on wet bitumen. Um, tire, other tyres that I've driven in the past uh, had a tendency to understeer a little bit and just not f uh, feel as connected to the road um, and, and give me that same sort of confidence and performance that the ridge grapplers do. So in terms of uh, wet and dry bitumen, of all the tyres I've driven on, the ridge grappler would be the best performer. The best performer on bitumen, uh, both wet and dry, like I was saying. Well, I'm sure you're all asking a question. Are the ridge grapplers noisy tyres? And at the end of the day, the ridge grapplers, they are not a noisy tyre, which really surprised me, especially with how aggressive the tread uh, design and pattern is on them. So obviously I can compare the Ridge Grapplers to uh, all the previous tyres that I've run on this particular car. And I can tell you, these are the quietest tyre that I've run. And that's uh, in all conditions. Obviously most of our road noise comes from bitumen driving. You generally find that when you're off road, there's other noise factors, which will um, overpower a tyre noise. But like I was saying, I do uh, 30 kilometres one way to work. So each day I do 60 kilometres to work and back in this car. That's down a um, major highway with concrete barriers on either side of it. So I can tell you um, there's no uh, road or tyre noise reverberation off of those barriers when I drive the car. <clears throat> windows up, windows down, there's negligible, like absolutely almost no tyre noise. Like I said, I was super, super impressed. I'm sure there was going to be some tyre noise. Um, and I fully expected, obviously, when the tyres were brand new, them to be nice and quiet. But I didn't expect after 60,000 Ks in a year, and that's comparing to, obviously, the other sets of tyres that I've run previously, after 50,000 Ks, after a year, uh, and that sort of thing, generally, those tyres have gotten noisier. But I can tell you that after a year and 60,000 Ks on my Ridge Grapplers, uh, they are still as quiet today as the day that they were brand spanking new. So, yeah. I'm really impressed. There's no road noise whatsoever uh, with the Ridge Grapplers. Given that probably most of our driving is on bitumen, it is important that we have good performing tyres on bitumen. Um, and obviously, I don't want that road noise and that hum and that drum and that sort of um, reverberation around the car, especially when we're doing our long distance trips. We can do two and a half, three thousand kilometres on bitumen just to get somewhere, towing our camper trailer and that sort of thing. Um, and the last thing I want is uh, noisy tyres that makes that trip more uh, tiring and draining to do. So yeah, Ridge Grapplers, no road noise. Very happy with that. Well, let's talk about how the Nitto Ridge Grapplers perform off-road. And arguably, that's one of the most important considerations when you go to buy an all-terrain tyre um, to fit it to your four-wheel drive that you're going to take off-road. How do they perform off-road? 
So again, I'm gonna break it down into categories. I'm gonna talk about how they perform off-road in sand, in mud, and on high-speed gravel. And the first one I'll talk about is high-speed gravel. Now, as you can see, and I'll give you a few close-ups and bits and pieces, the Nitto Ridge Grapplers, they don't, they don't have any chipping or cutting um, from our travel on all the high-speed gravel that we've done. So that's a testament to how well they do perform on high-speed gravel. Um, I also can say, that compared to some of the other tyres I've driven on in the past, the Nitto Ridge Grapplers have quite a square shoulder profile. And I've found that on uh, high-speed gravel, that square shoulder profile gives you a uh, good bite and good grip in the corners. So they do perform really well on high-speed gravel. They don't chip and cut, and they do give you good cornering and stability. Now, um, any tyre with a, a large tread or open tread sort of uh, design um, and a large gap between the, the tread blocks, they're gonna pick up stones and they're gonna flick them out. So in my case, uh, certainly at the back, uh, I've got some damage uh, inside my guards. and uh, It's not, uh, it's not necessarily damage, it's more of a cosmetic thing where stones have come out of the tread of the tyre and have come up and chipped that sort of like Raptor line sound deadening uh, paint um, in my wheel arches. Now, um, that's something that's occurred over time, a long period of time, but I do find that with the Nitto Ridge Grapplers, you do get the occasional stone uh, get flicked out of the, of the tread and rattle around in the wheel arch. Now, I wouldn't say that that happens or occurs any more frequently than any other tyres I've driven on. Certainly, I haven't necessarily noticed it happening more often, but uh, I have noticed it. So, it's, it's a consideration with um, any sort of aggressive tyre that you fit to your car. Um, on high-speed gravel, it's going to flick rocks and they're going to flick around in your wheel arches. Yeah, it, it is what it is. But that's a very, very small uh, trade-off. Uh, when you compare it to the actual performance that you get on high-speed gravel. They perform exceptionally well, um, give me a lot of confidence, and you know, overall, with good suspension setup, good tyres, the car drives as well on high-speed gravel as it does on a bitumen road, and that's really all we can ask for, especially, you know, load the camper trailer up and go touring. Uh, it's, it's really comfortable, it's really capable, and the tyres perform really well. Like I said, they're very durable and they're not showing any signs of damage or wear and tear from a lot of high-speed gravel. So very happy with that. How do they then perform when it comes to taking them onto sand? Well, like I said, we've done quite a few sand trips and one of the biggest considerations when it comes to taking a four-wheel drive onto the sand is letting your tires down and letting air out of them, deflating them a little bit. What that does is it increases the footprint um, and it gives you more traction, more flotation on the sand. Now, there's uh, certain beaches around Western Australia that are as hard as the ground that I'm standing on now, and you don't need to let your tyres down on them. But there's probably um, way, 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 way more beaches out there that are soft, some sort of um, semi-soft, some of them very soft, um, that you do need to let your tyres down for, otherwise you're gonna get bogged. So how do the Ridge Grapplers perform in sand? Well, like I said, tire pressure is the most important thing. What I have found though, and this is due to the construction and the design of the actual Ridge Grappler tire itself, is they have a really, really stiff sidewall. So the aggressive all-terrain tires, a lot of them on the market are like this. They have taken the carcass or the strength, the underpinnings the, uh, of the tire from their more aggressive uh, and heavier mud terrain sort of cousins. And then obviously they've, uh, you know, made it a little bit less aggressive. So the, the, the tire is very strong. And of course, what that means is when you do let air out of the tires, they don't necessarily bulge um, in, in the same fashion that you would expect uh, maybe a normal all-terrain tire to. So what I've found, um, and this has been the same across uh, the RTs that I ran previously, that you do need to let just a little bit more air out. By a little bit, I mean about two PSI more out of the Ridge Grapplers than I would have with all terrains that I've run in the past to get the same level of performance. 
Um, and I, I purely just put that down to the, uh, the strong sidewall. And now that's a, that's a key feature of the tyre. It's not a complaint at all. The strong sidewall, it's a good thing. Just means that when you do hit the sand, you need a little, let a little bit more air out of them. You see a lot of people out there say that aggressive tread pattern tyres, uh, all they're gonna do in the sand is get you bogged. They just dig in and they're, they're no good in the sand. Now, I can debunk uh, a lot of that. We've just done a trip up the coast um, just recently. Part of our uh, one week trip that we went away was along the coast. Uh, first time towing our camper trailer in the sand. And I can tell you that the ridge grapplers performed absolutely flawlessly. We didn't get bogged once. Um, that was towing obviously our camper and with our car fully loaded for a week away. And the first part of the trip was the section that was along the beach. Um, so yeah, uh, they don't dig in, they don't bog you down uh, like people will try and make you believe. That being said, in comparison to other tyres I've run in the past, um, you know, predominantly comparing them to the Toyo RTs, they do, uh, they do dig a little bit more. So not to the point where you're gonna get bogged, but if you're stationary and you just stomp on the throttle, uh, they are gonna dig and you are going to struggle a little bit. But if you roll into it, and let them come up on the sand before you get into the throttle more aggressively, um, they give you no issues whatsoever. That's something that I just put down to the tread design of the ridge grapplers. Having a lot of horizontal, large horizontal voids in the tread surface going across the tyre does give you good grip and it does dig into the mud and the sand. Um, when you compare it to sort of other aggressive all-terrain tyres out there that perhaps have uh, their tread blocks run more longitudinally and lengthways along the tyre, they probably won't dig uh, quite as much. But like I was saying, they certainly don't dig to the point where you're gonna get yourself bogged. If you are, um, I guess, mod modular in your throttle application and you just start out gently and then just roll into the throttle when you go to take off aggressively in sand, you'll have no issues with the tire. But if you just stomp on the throttle, they will dig in a little bit. So yeah. Overall, very, very happy with how they perform in the sand. They have given me no issues. Uh, they haven't slid off the bead or anything like that. We've had these tyres uh, down to 10 PSI uh, on the softest sort of beaches in, in our southwest region. And yeah, haven't given us any issues in terms of uh, deep beading or anything like that. So overall, very, very happy with how the ridge grapplers perform in the sand. So let's have a chat about how the Nitto Ridge Grapplers perform in the wet, slippery, junky stuff like mud and clay and that sort of thing. And whilst the car looks pretty clean today, I'm gonna to put a few shots up on the screen of what it looked like two weeks ago when we came back from our most recent trip. Now that one there, uh, we had to completely change our plan. We had to go inland. We had to escape a big cold front, big weather system that was coming in over the coast. In the end, we received about eight mil of rain over about three days. Um, and where we were was red clay country, which if you're familiar with that country, when it gets wet, it gets very slippery. And overall, I was very, very, very happy with how the ridge grapplers performed. We had to tow our camper in, explore, well, we did a little bit of exploring around the station, collecting some firewood, that sort of thing. And then obviously we had to tow our camper out after all that rain as well. Um, and overall, the tyres and the car performed really, really well. Now, they're not as aggressive as a full-blown mud terrain tyre, so you would expect that with that, they don't, or they aren't, um, they don't perform quite as well as a full-blown mud terrain tyre would in slippery, muddy stuff. That's to be expected. That being said, I did see and I was able to compare these tyres to the Nitto Trail Grapplers, which my Jake was running on that trip. And you could just see in a few places when it got really, really, really wet and slippery, um, his tyres just performed that little bit better. They seemed to just eject that mud and give them a little bit more traction. And to be honest, that's to be expected uh, with the Trail Grapplers. They do have a larger opening um, and that sort of thing uh, between the, all the tread blocks, um, which gives them that little bit better performance in the mud. So yeah, overall, in the mud, in the wet, slippery stuff, I have absolutely no complaints about the Ridge Grapplers. They do feature a really good side biter profile along the edge of the tyre. That gives you good performance in the ruts and that sort of thing. Um, it gives you good grip on the side and good grip on the tread. And then really, that's what you want.
I do need to talk to you about is the two punctures that I suffered uh, on our six week trip in the first uh, sort of six weeks that I did have the Ridge Grapplers for. And I've got uh, some clips that I'll put up on the screen whilst I talk about them. So the very first uh, tire puncture that we had was well through at El Questro Station. Now I was doing the right thing. We were tackling some of the more challenging tracks around El Questro, the one that goes down to the billabong out the back, for example. And so when, you, when I decided to tackle those more challenging tracks, I let a little bit more air out of my tires. So I was running about 20, about between 16 to 20 PSI, uh, 16 front, 20 back, I think. And by doing that, uh, what I did was somewhere along the line, I ran over a nail. And unfortunately, in my case, it went right in through the shoulder of the tire here. And because then obviously the tires rolled over it and compressed on it, uh, being that the tire was let down, it's actually then the nails come out again, not far from the bead of the tire. Now, uh, that's really just unfortunately bad luck in my case. In all my experience with tires, punctures um, and that sort of thing, I've never had an instance where uh, a nail has gone in and also out of a tire and left two punctures. So yeah, just bad luck. Bad luck picking up a nail in the first place um, and bad luck that it punctured that tire twice. Now where it punctured the tire in the shoulder, that uh, was actually a repairable puncture from the inside with a patch, but unfortunately where it, it then protruded out next to the bead, uh, that was not repairable because it's in the sidewall. So uh, I had to throw that tire in the bin sadly uh, and buy another tire. Now uh, I went through all that with the guys at Tire Power Bayswater um, and they supplied that uh, additional tire for me. So that was all good. Now let's talk about this second puncture, which actually happened on our way back um, from Carnarvon back to Perth, right at the very end of that trip. Now, it was such a tiny minute puncture, again, right in the shoulder of the tire. What I suspect is that it was a nail or something like that again, that punctured it. Um, and again, I just put that down to bad luck. I don't know um, what tires out there are actually designed to stop nails puncturing them. Um, so yeah, it, it just is what it is. That being said, uh, that puncture there was so small, so tiny, it actually took me a couple of days to find, and I didn't find it until I was actually washing the car. Um, and that one there, we were able to patch at Tire Power Bayswater, and I've got that tire sitting in my shed as my spare tire now. So yeah, happy days with that. So I guess the last thing we have to do is summarize my review on the Nitto Ridge Grapplers. Now the size that I elected to run in this set is a 305 70 17. It's equivalent of a 34 inch tire. That is a big tire. And of course, with all big tires, you do pay a higher price. That all being said, $450 for a 34 inch tire. It's getting up there. It's quite expensive. But at the end of the day, Nitto is a renowned brand, a really high quality tire brand. And the Nitto Ridge Grappler, as you would expect from a high quality brand with a high price, performs really, really well. So like I said, like I've touched on, like I've spoken on in all the other bits and pieces of this review, uh, I am really, really happy with how the Ridge Grapplers perform uh, to the point where I'm now gonna put Ridge Grapplers, uh, match these tires and rims on my camper trailer, and I'm gonna run these again on my, as my next set of tires. All that being said, Ridge Grapplers are becoming harder and harder to come by. I guess as people learn that they are popular tires, more people buy into them. Um, they are going through a supply uh, shortage at the moment, which is obviously driving up uh, demand for them um, and driving up the price. So yeah, they're an expensive tire, but in my opinion and in my experience, um, well worth the money. Well everyone, that wraps up my review on the Nudo Ridge Grapplers. I do hope you found it helpful and insightful and useful. Now if it did, I want you to go down there, smash that like button and say thanks for the review. Of course, I've been pretty fortunate to have had the opportunity to run both Toyo RTs and the Nudo Ridge Grapplers now. And that is gonna be a video that I shoot um, coming up in the future and release on the channel, a direct comparison comparing the Ridge Grapplers with the RTs. Now, if you want to be notified when that video comes out, the best way to do that is go down there, smash that subscribe button 
and enable notifications by clicking the bell. Anyway, happy safe adventuring everybody. Stay safe on the tracks and trails. Hopefully one day I'll get to see you out there. If not, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.